I've never watched Game of Thrones. There, I said it. I'm probably the last person alive that hasn't watched Game of Thrones yet. And you know why? Because I'm too scared of committing to, what is it, eight seasons with 10 episodes each? I mean, it's just too much. And I have the same problem with books. I get so many book recommendations like, oh, this is such a classic. This is a life-changing book. But all those books are like this thick. So in today's video, I wanna share with you three short books onto 200 pages that completely and profoundly changed the way I look at life. One of them even made me cry a little bit for the first time ever reading a book. And no, I'm not talking about data structures and algorithms in Java. No, I've never read that. So let's start with the first book that changed the way I look at life and society. It's The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I first heard it mentioned on a Joe Rogan podcast. You know The Four Agreements, Don Miguel I heard Ruiz? I love this book. It's like a, an amazing book. And after finishing the book, I understand why. The book talks about this fog of perception that causes us to not see ourselves and the people around us for who they truly are. It's the reason most of our lives are controlled by false beliefs based on fear and judgment rather than freedom and love. And this fact that we basically live in this dreamlike state that is not the real world blew my mind the most. But before I explain, first you need to know the way out of this nightmare by following the four agreements. The first agreement is be impeccable with your word. Words are more powerful than you think. The second agreement is don't take anything personally. Bad things start happening when you take everything personally. The third agreement is don't make assumptions. Remember the saying about the word assume? It makes an ass out of you and me. Well, same thing here, but with a spiritual touch. And the fourth agreement is always do your best. If you always do the best you can under your given circumstances, you can always say, I've done my best, which will set you free of any guilt or regret. Following these four agreements will give you the ability to create heaven in your life. You see, the biggest realization I had while reading this book is the fact that we're born into this life free, but then we're molded to fit into society. We're born into a set of systems and beliefs that are already there. We get told what is right or wrong. We get told how to behave and how not to behave. But who says those things are the truth? Who says those things are actually right or wrong? Who says trying to fit in society is a good thing? If society is so good, then why do we still have so much violence, criminals, wars? How about instead of trying to fit in society so hard to follow these arbitrary rules, we try to become a better version of ourselves. We focus on enjoying life more, loving ourselves and loving other people around us by being impeccable with our word, not taking things personally, not assuming anything, and always doing the best we can. The Four Agreements. Next up is a true classic. A popular book you've probably heard before in the self-development, psychology or philosophy domain. I'm talking about Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. The book is split up into two parts, where in the first half we follow Viktor, who's a German psychiatrist that gets captured by the Nazis in World War II and survives the horrible atrocities taking place in German concentration camps. He observed how prisoners that lost all meaning in life were usually the ones to not survive for very long. They would usually commit suicide or succumb to their health issues. And on the other hand, the prisoners that did have a meaning in life, that could focus on future goals or could imagine a life outside of the camps, life going back to normal, were usually the ones that could survive far longer and some of them even made it out alive, like Victor. Choosing to focus on meaning in life, future goals and hope, despite of being in such a nightmare, brought the mental strength and the capacity to survive. Losing meaning, on the other hand, would mean death. The second half of the book focuses on logotherapy. Now, logotherapy was developed by Viktor Frankl himself. Logotherapy is based on the premise that the primary motivational force of an individual is to find meaning in life. So this book taught me two lessons that changed the way I look at life. And the first one being that no matter your circumstances, no matter how hard and difficult life might seem right now, you always have the control over your reaction to any event, meaning you have the freedom to react however you want to any event and nobody can take that freedom away. Now I know it's easy for me to speak as I've never gone through something as horrible as World War II, but it's a comforting fact to know that no matter your circumstances, no matter how difficult life might be, you always have the control to react to any event the way you want. And the second lesson is that life has no known meaning, no known meaning. I have no idea why the universe exists, why we exist, what our life is all about, what we're meant to do. Nobody knows this. We're born without any rules, without any guides, without any tutorials. There are no rules. 
except for the laws of nature, there's nothing telling us how we should behave and how what we should do in life. So therefore I choose to make my own meaning, to make create my own purpose in life. And some people choose to see life without meaning and tell me that having a purpose in life is like lying to yourself because there is no purpose in life. But the fact is the universe is one big mystery. Life is one big mystery. We have no idea why we are here, whether we have a purpose or we, whether we don't have a purpose. They're equally wrong and right. But I learned living life and through experience and by reading this book that choosing to not have any purpose and meaning in life usually leads to a very miserable life. And choosing to create your own purpose and meaning in life usually leads to a very fulfilling, happy and peaceful life. So I choose to create my own purpose and meaning. Before we get to the last book, the only book that actually made me shed a tear. I just wanted to say if you're not sure whether you want to read or buy these books and you want to read a summary first, I could recommend a service called Shortform. I've started using Shortform a couple of weeks ago and I found it really, really valuable so far. In fact, most of the highlights in this video are based on their guides and key takeaways. Simply put, Shortform is a platform filled with book summaries on steroids, covering more than a thousand non-fiction books with new ones being added every single week, ranging from all kinds of themes like finance, self-improvement and productivity. I personally don't use the summaries as a replacement for reading books, but to get more valuable takeaways after reading a book. A short form you can find key highlights, notes and even exercises to help you integrate what you've actually just read. Since it's quite a while since I've read Man's Search for Meaning, it was a good way to recall what the paths to meaning were. And since Shortform wanted to sponsor this video, they gave me a personal link to share with you guys so you can get a 5 day free trial and a 20% discount if you go to shortform.com slash Stefanovic or just click the link in the description. And now, the book that has really impacted me on an emotional level, When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalaniti. I don't know if it's because of recency bias since I've just finished reading it a couple of weeks ago, but this book really touched me. It's a memoir written by Dr. Kalaniti himself, a brilliant neurosurgeon that has treated many terminally ill patients and saved the lives of many. However, at the age of 35, he gets diagnosed with terminal cancer himself. And the book describes his dealing with his upcoming death. We get to look inside his thoughts and feelings as he has treated many terminally ill patients throughout his life and then eventually becomes one himself. And even though you can't compare the suffering of just one man with the suffering of millions described in Man's Search for Meaning, this book still makes it much more relatable. It's just one human who's unfortunate enough to get a horrible disease that basically anyone could get at any time in his life. And that's what this book has managed to do for me. It made me think about life and death and it reminded me of the fact that your life can change completely in just a matter of seconds. His life turned upside down when he got diagnosed. And the same thing can happen to anyone reading this book. Even though the sadness of this book is compensated with quite some humor, it still left me with a strange, heavy-hearted feeling, yet positive feeling. On the one hand, I felt so sorry for Paul as he truly seemed like a wonderful human being that just didn't deserve this fate. But I was also really thankful for him writing this book as it made me more grateful and appreciative of my own life. The days after the book, I really experienced this kind of afterglow where I loved my friends and family and just appreciated the fact that they love me back, that I'm still young, fit, healthy, that I can go through life without any health issues, that I can just enjoy life. And sometimes you really need these reminders because we can get caught up in complaining or being busy, not having the time to appreciate that we don't need much to be happy. And that one day, inevitably, the only thing we will want is to get better. As Confucius said, a healthy man wants a thousand things, but a sick man only wants one. I cannot recommend this book enough as it has truly impacted my life. And another thing that has impacted my life is the concept of being a time billionaire. Check out this video if you want to be grateful for being young and grabbing life by the balls again. Hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.